This is a video about weights versus rep, reps. Reps meaning repetitions, the number of reps that you do in a weight set and how much weight, weight is talking about how much weight or intensity to put on that resistance training. That sounds like a, a discussion for bodybuilders and um, weightlifters, right? And they're not necessarily the same thing. Um, it is. And in fact, I'm going to be spending a lot, a, some time talking about one of the, the legendary uh, bodybuilders, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and a not well known at all, but incredibly uh, a world record holder in terms of weight lifting, a fellow named uh, Richard the Ant Hawthorne. He, he earned the nickname the Ant because he owned several world records in terms of the amount of um, weight he can lift compared to his body weight. Now, all of this is very interesting, and it actually comes from a, a series of videos that I did on the risk associated with sarcopenia. I will tell you, and I'll get to the end of this video, and um, we may end up saying, you know what, maybe it's neither. But we'll get to that point when we, when we get there. Maybe it's both, maybe it's neither. It's just not that simple. But let's go back to what kicked all this off. And again, <clears throat> is somewhat... I had a friend about 20 years ago that uh, I worked with, and one of his favorite concepts was what he called the law of unintended results. And here was the point. I did a couple of videos on sarcopenia. That's a medical term. It, uh, uh, sarco means muscle and penia means lack thereof. So the point is, once we hit our mid-60s and beyond, loss of muscle mass is a critical risk factor. In fact, there's a lot of people, uh, Brad Bell would say this, several others would say that there's a couple of decades where we really have high risk for heart attack and stroke. Then after those decades, that's when we start getting into risks associated with falls, dementia, things that really do um, respond well to having better musculature. And I just did a couple of articles on showing that risk. Um, you may remember uh, I showed a couple of times this very uh, telling MRI. These are MRIs of our medical um, magnetic resonance imaging of a 25-year-old and a 63-year-old. The point behind this is the circumference the thickness of the 25-year-old's um, thigh is the same as the 63-year-old, but the 63-year-old has significant risk here, and, here, and you, it's very clear why. He's replaced a lot of his thigh musculature with fat. There's a lot of explanations. We don't totally understand them yet. You know, I've, I mentioned HIIT and mitochondria, and that, I think, is what tripped off a lot of, uh, of debate. That and the fact that YouTube is a very male-attended um, viewership, and so we got some male macho going on in, her, in here in terms of uh, video reactions. Uh, there's another thing to think about, though, and that is um, Fats uh, actually generate some of their own hormones, I think like leptin, some of that, uh, and biomarkers. So that may be at play here as well. That's, this video is not about this. That, it's, this video is about weight versus reps. And again, maybe a different perspective besides the other two. Now, you look at me, and <laughs> I get it. You discount me Talk. I'm neither a bodybuilder nor a weight lifter. Um, I'm no Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I'm certainly no Richard the Ant Hawthorne. Uh, that's true. In fact, my major concern is I've done too little uh, weight lifting and resistance training in my life. I came through a time when it was long, slow distance. So I did a lot of long, slow distance, did a lot of marathons, uh, an ultra marathon, and really did not have... Uh, enough training in that area. Right now, for example, I've gotten up to 30 to 60 reps on most of my uh, activities, and I'm not anywhere where I need to be in terms of the amount of weight. So, again, 
I'm no Arnold Schwarzenegger. In fact, what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about some, what he has said in this area and also what someone else has said. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a bodybuilder and um, Richard the Ant Hawthorne. I mentioned him uh, earlier. Hawthorne is uh, earned the nickname the Ant because um, he's got the he's got several world records in terms of the amount of weight he can lift uh, compared to his body weight. He's uh, what five three hundred and thirty two pounds and weightlifting as you can see here six hundred and ten pounds deadlift. So both of them uh, said a lot of the same things. And here's what they said. I'll go ahead and give you the uh, punchline. They both said it's both. But let's go back and see what the uh, viewership said. Uh, one of the first uh, viewers that came out of the blocks tripping this off was Jay Kineland. And 76 and have sarcopenia, but no other signs of, quote, frailty, end quote. Uh, they may overlap, but by no means, quote, identical, end quote. And I, I made the point that they're very similar and uh, some people may say identical. Got it. Good point. Uh, understand the criticism. But again, let's go deeper in terms of this and let's talk about some of the reactions we're seeing. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate your videos, but it seems here you need to dig deeper research-wise. Uh, his point was HIIT helps, but progressive resistance is more important for building and maintaining muscle mass. Very well may be true. Again, I'm going to get back to the point that maybe neither perspective is correct. And I went on to respond and say, look, I, I don't. Uh, denigrate resistance training. I've not done enough of it in my life, but for the past three years, yes, I've uh, greatly decreased my long, slow distance and greatly increased my HIIT, my HIT, and resistance training because those are the two things that are showing significant improvement in this area. Again, that didn't stop. We just continued to get uh, debate in that area. Uh, Chris Seal, HIIT may be good for mitochondria, but it's not nearly as effective for muscle mass as resistance training. Ideally, we should be doing both. And again, Chris, thank you for that comment. I would agree. This is a balance issue. And again, it's both. It's not either or. Um, uh, we continued to get um, comments about that. William Bibb said, and thank you for Coming to my aid, uh, Mr. Bibb, Dr. Brewer recognizes the need for both high intensity cardiovascular exertional exercise and resistance training. He went on to say he's 71 and he did 125 squats this morning. And he probably expects I did that and more. No, I don't do that more. I usually do around 90. Um, that's actually, I have to tell you, I, I will admit that's stretching it. I'm up to about 60. I was doing 90 in these areas with squats, um, but I've moved on to other stuff, uh, related exercises. 125, Wayne Trenton says 125 squats. Curious what weight you use to accomplish this. Seems to me it'd be more productive to use higher weights and perform less squats. So I then go on to talk about train, uh, time under tension, TUT, T-U-T. And here we go with SEPO 100-100. Gym training is not only for young males. Do deadlifts with heavy weights, maximum of five reps. And you can almost feel the hormonal response. Uh, squats are great, but deadlift is even better. Too many are doing isolated movements such as biceps curls. Even elderly should skip machines and use free weights. Well, again, what we're trying to, to accomplish is uh, decreasing that fat mass, and, which is inevitable, or sh is inevitable if you don't exercise as you age, because um, just what's going on hormonally. Now, as I said, I understand you don't want to hear what I have to say about this. Let's talk about two different guys. One of the greats in terms of 
you may not agree with his politics or anything else about him. Uh, that's one of the comments I tend to get, but you do have to acknowledge uh, Schwarzenegger's accomplishments in terms of bodybuilding. So we're going to talk about a bodybuilder's response to this, weights versus reps. Then we're going to talk about a weightlifter's response to this, weights versus reps. So chest and back, uh, one of the um, recommendations from uh, Arnold, three to four sets and 10 repetitions. So a set is how many, um, I won't go into definitions of these two, but you multiply them out and we're talking 30 to 40 reps, right on down this line, 30 to 40, five times 25 on crunches. So you're getting up to 75, 30 to 40, 30 to 40, 30 to 40. So you're saying, well, Brewer, you, you told me you were going to talk about, or Arnold was going to talk about major reps. Now he's talking about other days, alternate days, days one, three, and five. Bench press, five times 10, 50 reps. Dumbbell flies, 50 reps. C cable crossovers, 72 reps. Dips to failure, meaning you just keep doing it until your muscles will not go any further. And it's not that you have a burn, it's that you continue to try to push it. He was uh, renowned for being able to push, quote, through failure, end quote, to achieve a true muscle failure, which very few of us can accomplish. Uh, dumbbell, dumbbell pull over 60 reps. So again, we're talking about 60 to 72 reps um, from uh, Schwarzenegger's perspective. Um, Schwarzenegger actually got down to 210 pounds. This was not during his um, uh, bodybuilding career. This was very soon thereafter, and it was in prepping. And sorry for the, the ugly video here. Um, it was for prepping uh, for the first major, well, I think it was one of the first major projects he had after, um, after his bodybuilding career, and that was... Um, Again, I believe filming Conan the Barbarian. The producer, uh, he, he mentions in a YouTube, the producer, uh, owner of the film basically said, Arnold, you got to get down to 210. Arnold's routine weight was 245. He saw that as a huge goal, but he also felt he could accomplish it. Instead of eating five, his usual five meals a day, he, he cut back on his eating, and instead of running his usual three miles a day, he doubled that up to five to six miles a day. He did get down to 209 pounds to meet on the deadline day, the day before his deadline for losing that weight. Now, why did I go there? Um, again, bodybuilding is wanting to have major size of your muscles, and um, I was never interested so much in size of muscles and I've always felt like um, it, those of us who try to get who focus too much on size can create significant risk for our heart especially if we get older and decrease our exercise and that's obviously very very true we'll talk a little bit more about um, thinner uh, workouts or, or thinner bodies but muscularity in just a minute when we get to Richard the Ant Hawthorne. This is Arnold uh, recently, uh, 30th of May, uh, 2018. Comeback continues. And you know he had surgery on his heart. Would I say that it's because he's been too heavy? No, I wouldn't say that. Um, it may be true, but I don't know that for sure. And I don't think, actually, I don't think it was. I think um, when you look at Arnold throughout his life, he's had a significant... Um, low amount of fat or relative fat mass. Um, <clears throat> he's training every day, day doing my reps, reps, reps. And again, there's a couple of videos where even at age 70, 71, he's saying, ah, reps, reps, reps. Now, I mentioned um, Richard the Ant Hawthorne a couple of times in this video, and I'll try to uh, remember to put the... Um, the video on, or the link to that video under this one, he says it's a hundred, a hundred overall reps, 
10 sets of 10 reps each. Um, let's go back. Yes, this is, um, this is Richard the Ant Hawthorne. I believe this was a, a world record attempt for him in terms of mass. And you can see the bar bending. Four reps, 610 pounds. And I, again, I believe he was something like 132 pounds at the time that he did this. Again, those of you who are watching this are saying, what? this is so weird. Um, no, I, I'm not suggesting anybody go here. I'm taking two of the guys that, that had a lot of opinions regarding reps versus intensity. And they both said, you got to do both. Uh, Hawthorne said for the first 25 to 50 reps, you're going to feel like this weight is way too small. And then the last 25 to 50, you're going to feel like you need to start adding the plates and that increasing intensity. And you're going to feel like this is way too much. And at the end of the day, they both said the same thing. Um, it's both. Also at the end of the day, um, Hawthorne was more into this, um, having a small muscle mass, but a large uh, strength. And Arnold was the, uh, not completely the other way around, but he was very comfortable having a, uh, a larger muscle mass. To me, I've had several conversations. I, I remember hearing Brad uh, Bale talking about this, and I've, uh, I haven't verified it completely yet. But his perspective was, we go through a couple of decades in our 60s for sure, um, but it starts in our 50s and uh, decreases in our 70s when we are at highest risk for a heart attack and maybe even stroke, but mostly for heart attack. And that as we get beyond our 65, 70 uh, age period, if we haven't had that heart attack, uh, other things become larger risks for us, like um, maybe stroke, but uh, cancers, and specifically falls. We've had several conversations about fall prevention. And um, here's one of the things that uh, several friends have recommended to me. Um, yes, reps. Yes, overall strength um, is very important. But there's also a, an issue about how functional is that? And those are the guys that would bring up, you know what, use a weight vest. Um, where does that fit in all of this? And you get very, very, like all of this, uh, this video, you can get a lot of macho driven activities here and you get some very macho driven weight vests. But um, I had this discussion with, uh, again, my sweet wife, Janice, who always likes to t take the other position. She said, Ford, you know, you're just way hyped up on uh, testosterone and intensity. I'm not going to agree to any of this. My perspective is you got to stop and think about who are you talking to? And she had a great point. A lot of our, um, a lot of our folks are uh, 80 year old couples that already have sarcopenia or already have osteopenia and have broken bones uh, from falls. Now, <clears throat> would you recommend weight, uh, intensity, high weights, or would you recommend um, repetition, 100 reps? And her, or would you recommend a weight vest like one, some of these macho guys? And, Here's the answer. Wouldn't recommend any, any of those for these people. You recommend figuring out where they are. That is step number one. So I'm going to finish this up. I appreciate your attention if you've made it this far. I have to uh, mention a couple of things. So I'm not dressed like I usually am. I'm dressed uh, far more casually. It's because I'm uh, at our, our beach place. And <clears throat> this was a picture of our dog, Ozzy. Um, it's January, it's cold, it's in the low, thor 
uh, 40s early or high 30s out there. And just like me, uh, Ozzy's got her dreams. And as you can see here, uh, her dream is chasing. She loves to chase balls um, or other toys, and she always picks up something. This piece of wood is bigger than she is. She was uh, able to pick it up. It was soaked and rotted out. Um, that's the view from our beach place, by the way. Again, pardon me if you think I'm rubbing it in. Here, There's a point behind this. She was able to pick that piece of wood up and bring it to me. Um, her dream is to, um, is to be chasing pieces of wood, chasing toys. She's a major, uh, um, that's her dream, that's her love of life. Um, I have a dream too. Some of the, uh, one of the greatest uh, orators, Martin Luther King had a, did his um, uh, speech in front of the uh, Reflection Pond in D.C. about having a dream where we had a world where people, where race relations were what they need to be. I have a dream where um, <clears throat> we don't get caught, so caught up in all of these debates. We understand the value for these debates, reps versus um, intensity versus um, assessment of where the patient is, where you are as an individual, and starting where you are. We don't get too wrapped up in terms of low carb, high fat, high, uh, high fat, low carb, plant versus, or vegan versus uh, uh, animal based. We don't get so wrapped up in terms of niacin or no niacin, statins versus statin haters. Um, I don't have, we don't have, um, a major resurgence of smoking in our younger populations, our youth. We don't have uh, an obesity epidemic. Patients come to me and they actually don't need to lose 30, 50, 150 pounds. They've already lost it. They're comfortable with uh, the idea of fasting and they, um, many of them have lost it through uh, mimic fasting or even um, every other day water fasting. They've gone back to some of their, um, some of the founding fathers of some of the key religions where fasting is a part of life. And they've, they've gone over the hump of those first few times where it was difficult. But now um, they're a BMI that instead of 35 or 40, their BMI is now 22, 23. They already know the issues of insulin resistance. They know that insulin resistance causes uh, inflammation of our um, of our arteries and therefore damage and they're watching they've they're they've already started doing continuous glucose monitoring they know that yes monthly if i take a break and take a vacation from my low carb meal and go have pizza and beer with my son my blood sugar is going to go up into the 180s 190s 210s and i'm looking at ways of just uh having that same vacation having fun with my son uh, but uh, not so many carbs. So I, I and actually, I have a I, I have a dream where I get to spend my time here, and I don't worry so much about so many people burning their arteries, setting themselves up for unnecessary heart attack and stroke. Thank you for your interest.